some say the mass of grizzly is a survivor of another age, the time of the saber-toothed tiger, the mammoth, the dire wolf, and the gigantic bull bear. It is even possible that threats of predation by big prehistoric carnivores may be the factor which honed the combative and aggressive nature of the grizzly, especially when defending its cubs. In the spring after hibernation, grizzly bears are so absorbed with eating that tourists and hunters can easily approach them on the beaches and sedge flats. Unfortunately for the bears, a spring bear hunt is sanctioned, which occurs when they have just left their dens and are hungrily eating sedge out in the open on the estuaries. Many of these spring bear hunts simply consist of hunters in a large support boat spotting bears on an estuary or a beach and then getting into a launch or zodiac and then motoring in and shooting the bears while they feed, more or less oblivious to things around them. Many conservationists have noted with alarm that many mid-coast river valleys which used to support large grizzly populations and still have viable salmon runs and the old bear trails are showing a haunting lack of recent evidence of the bear's presence. In the summer and fall, hunting guides stake out the bears while they are fishing in the rivers and streams. And although illegal, evidence suggests that bait is being left to attract bears to tree platforms from which hunters get an easy kill. As one lodge owner has stated, it's the Wild West out here. This mid-coast river is one of thousands of rivers and streams along the BC coast which have had their returning salmon runs reduced or destroyed by clear-cut logging. Several years ago, however, the Federal Department of Fisheries re-established pink salmon runs in this system by building protected salmon spawning channels feeding into the main river system. The pink salmon runs have been rebuilding over the past years to present runs of several hundred thousand fish. Although the spawning channels were put in mainly for pink salmon, coho and spring are becoming more numerous and the salmon are beginning to repopulate the rest of the river system. Where they have been implemented elsewhere on the coast, these types of salmon enhancement and salmon habitat restoration programs have had very rewarding results and points to the resiliency of the fish if they are given a chance. With the return of the salmon, grizzly bears, which had been rarely seen in this area, began to show up on the estuary and in the spawning channels. From one bear being seen 13 years ago, their numbers had risen to about 40 by 1997. In 1998, however, 15 bears were missing, bringing the number back down to about 25. It is speculated that these missing bears may have been killed by poachers. In the fall, the Fish and Wildlife Department allow a grizzly hunt in the Night Inlet area. The hunters have taken to hanging out along the edge of the No Hunting Reserve, waiting for the bears to come up the river from the reserve. Once they pass under the old logging bridge, they are easy targets, like shooting fish in a barrel. Uh, this is a uh, guide outfitting operation called Trophy West out of Campbell River. Right now they're about uh, 200 feet, less than 200 feet from the edge of a no hunting zone. Uh, they're camped here. They've just flown out uh, a couple of seconds ago. They were in here, uh, came in yesterday at the start of grizzly hunting season. Uh, less than a thousand feet from here, we've got an ecotourism operation going, uh, viewing grizzly bears. Uh, so we've got bears that are about as scared as people as uh, you and I are scared of people. They're very habituated bears. Uh, they're very tolerant of people. They're not aggressive uh, in the sense that people think of bears being aggressive. They're very trusting in the way that we, we act, and these fellows are going out looking for these bears. They're sitting on the edge of the boundary like vultures. Uh, no offense to vultures. And they're going out and trying to pick off these bears like sitting ducks. 
Why does this bother you? Uh, it bothers me for several reasons. Uh, number one, I guess, because these bears have developed this trust in us. I've seen this develop over the last five weeks that I've been in here. Uh, we have not had a single aggressive encounter with a bear. We haven't even had an aggressive action from a bear. We haven't even gnashed teeth or anything towards us. Very, very tolerant of human presence. And these bears are going to be walking right by these hunters. We may be walking right uh, towards them uh, out of curiosity. And these hunters are going to be able to just pick and choose which one they want and shoot it. What happened uh, with the first hunt? What did you guys do? Uh, first hunt, we actually had uh, three of us from Night Inlet Lodge uh, came down this road approximately uh, 300 feet at 6 in the morning, uh, still in the dark, waited an hour and a half for the hunters to come by at daybreak, uh, pulled in behind them, started following them with a the video camera. What we wanted to do was get some publicity behind this, uh, show people what was going on up here with these bears that are very used to humans being around and having hunters come in and just pop them off. Uh, we followed them down near the bridge inside the no hunting zone. Uh, at that point, they veered off up the Glendale River, uh, but only went about 20 yards off, still in the no hunting zone, and sat down. We sat down in a standstill for about half an hour with no conversation. At that point, we began conversing, and uh, they decided to pull out after I told them that the press was coming in. Because of the actions taken by the guides, no bears were shot at this site in 1997 by legitimate hunters. But the next spring, two bears were shot in a bay about 10 miles away. One bear was wounded and made its way back to the estuary, where it was seen limping around with a possible broken shoulder. Then it disappeared, likely to go off somewhere to die. I think that's a good thing for people to come out and see this sort of thing. Excellent. I mean, people that have never seen bears before, this is the place to come. Okay. 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 It's easy to look at a bear in a zoo, but when you see it in the wild, it gives you a whole different perspective. This is where they belong, and there's just so few left that the, the bears that are out here should be somehow protected. They really, uh, they really are the symbol of, I think, wildlife completely and wild places. nature as much as possible. It's all we can really. We're not likely to see grizzly bears where we live. Where are you from? England. What, what do you think of what you've seen so far? Oh, it's fantastic. It really is fantastic. Better than we ever imagined possible. Mm. Apart from the recorded kills of about 400 grizzly bears last year, many more are estimated to have been killed by poachers or to have simply not been recorded by legitimate hunters. Many conservationists and environmental groups are becoming increasingly concerned that provincial wildlife estimates for grizzly bears along the coast are far too high and are calling for a moratorium on grizzly bear hunting in BC until the true numbers and the true state of the grizzly bear populations in BC are known. The question here at Night Inlet and all along the mid coast is whether we will give the great bears a chance to survive or whether we will allow them to be hunted and driven into oblivion. <laughs>